All right, back in the locker room again. Uh, we're going to do something completely different today. Um, gone from COVID to mental health issues uh, to neurodegenerative issues and and back around. Uh, today we're actually going to talk uh, uh, football um, and uh, we're going to talk about the power play. So power in my mind uh, is probably the best play in football. Um, it is something that can be run uh, on any down, any situation, um, and uh, has some basic uh, rules that uh, doesn't matter so much what the defense is, is trying to do. Uh, you can execute the uh, base rules and come up uh, with a really big play. Um, uh, we uh, run power uh, based on a, a gap scheme, uh, meaning uh, uh, the, uh, we're attending to the spaces between our offensive linemen uh, as the gaps in the front, uh, and that's uh, how we build our rules uh, for the uh, power play. Um, in this case, we consider it a backside uh, gap scheme where we're addressing uh, the gaps to the uh, back side, sort of opposite the direction that the play uh, is going. And then to gain an advantage, uh, uh, we bring a guy around from the uh, back side to block. Um, so uh, power in that sense is essentially a, a pick and pull play. We're gonna, we're gonna pick players and pull a guy around to lead the play. Uh, up through the hole, um, but uh, power is uh, a, a little bit more uh, distinct uh, in that, um, in general, uh, power is run out of a two-back set so that you have a, uh, a full back or a big back or a blocking back uh, who is also uh, going to uh, lead uh, the play. And in that sense, and somewhat power uh, can be a, a little bit limiting as uh, it's best run from uh, a two-back uh, set and not a single-back set. So um, again, I, I think this is probably the best play in football. Uh, I used to think that the triple option was the best play in football uh, because um, uh, it allowed you to not block so many players that you had by reading, uh, you had the, the ability uh, to um, uh, uh, get double teams and uh, overwhelm your opponents uh, in, in blocking the option. Uh, but over the years, I've changed my mind. Uh, the option uh, doesn't attack downhill as well uh, as uh, power. Uh, there's the risk for turnovers, and uh, unfortunately, in the triple option, you tend to waste blockers more to the back side of the play, even though you've got guys on the front side that you, you don't have to block, that you're going to read. Some of the, the excessive uh, backside blocking just ends up not being uh, that great advantage to, uh, of blockers that you think it would be. And uh, in addition, uh, the uh, triple option uh, it runs the risk of uh, turnovers uh, and uh, uh, bobbling the ball uh, uh, tackles for loss. Uh, and uh, those types of things, if you're committed to a running offense, uh, getting behind on the chains uh, can be uh, devastating uh, and destroy your whole uh, rhythm. Um, so, uh, over the years, uh, I've come to believe that uh, you know, power is indeed the best uh, single play in football, and therefore we start with power and build the offense uh, logically from what is considered the best play in football. So let's go to the board and talk about it a little bit. So we've got a basic... Um, uh, formation up here. Uh, we would call this a red formation um, with the tight end to the right side and we've uh, put a uh, flanker out there outside of the tight end in this case. Uh, we've got eye formation in the backfield with a two back set. Full back we want those feet at five yards and uh, in general it uh, depends on the kid but the tailback 
we want them about eight yards deep. So we want them pretty, pretty deep and, and coming downhill. Um, up on the front here, you can see that I have um, put uh, letters in these gaps. So these are the two A gaps, the two B gaps, and the two C gaps. And as we uh, de define our blocking, or as we talked about, we're going to treat this as a backside gap scheme in terms of blocking. So uh, in this case, we're going to run this play to the right side, and we want, therefore, to block these gaps to the backside. So this is what this would look like, just as a general gap rule. This, this, there are uh, blocking uh, uh, schemes that we run, but it's based on this backside gap rule. So the center is going to block backside A. This guard's going to block his backside A. The tackle's going to block down backside B. And the tight end is going to block down backside C. Okay? So that, that's how we would run this. Uh, what we're really trying to do is, is, is create uh, a, a, a non-penetrable front with, gap, uh, with the gaps being closed down by, by um, blocking backside. And then as this play starts and the blocks start to move, what we end up getting is a push this way. Um, and ultimately, if we get the push we want, we want to see a wall that's sort of a bit of a moving wall, but essentially forms about like that as it, as it climbs the line of scrimmage and all gaps are sealed. So from there, this guard is going to wrap around and lead the play upfield. Usually looking to the inside to be another brick on the wall. Our fullback here, our blocking back, or our big back, his attack point is going to be at the B gap. So he's going to come to the B gap downhill as an attack point, and he's going to kick out the first man that tries to cross the line of scrimmage. Our tailback is also going to come downhill, but it's going to come downhill directly at the A gap to start. What this does is it ensures us that he can get into relationship with the pulling guard that's wrapping around, because we want him riding his uh, his near hip to the back as they come through the hole. We want them running kind of in unison through the hole. If he takes an, an outside attack lane, even though the play may end up going outside a little bit more, he can get in front of that guard and then he's in some big trouble sometimes. So he's going to drive down to the A gap and then get on the hip of that guard and he's going to ride that right through the hole there. Okay. Now we've got an issue on the back side here is this guard's leaving. That guy's got this, this A gap. So our tackle has to become a B backside B gap protector. So his step, it, instead of climbing the gap, like these guys are climbing their gaps, his first step is going to be very flat and he's going to scoop up the B gap and secure the B gap. Now, if no player shows in the B gap, depending on the front, we do a couple of things with him. If we're getting, you know, a backside uh, quick pressure as he tries to climb the B gap, then and he, if he does not meet a hard resistance there, then he'd pivot back out and make sure nobody catches this from behind. If it's a front that maybe doesn't have this potential edge rusher coming in uh, and, he, and nobody comes to B, then he can climb to the next level, okay? So, let's look at this just in concept. The reason we like this so much is we're trying to put uh, bricks in the wall and create this wall right here and get up through it. So this is not necessarily kind of your big wide open gap cutback play um, where the, the back gets a, a lot of liberty to try to find a hole. We're trying to define the hole as being right here and we're trying to create a wall 
uh, an impenetrable wall uh, right there and get into that crease. So this is different than running a zone type play where we are coming downhill fast and hard and hitting this crease here, riding the pulling guard up through there. And sometimes if the defender decides to squeeze down here and doesn't come up field and give us a good kick, that little lane gets very tight. And some of the, the backs have a tendency when they, when they don't see open space, they want to cut it back. You know, that's kind of a natural thing. They want to find open space. What we really encourage our backs to do is to ride that guard. And even if he doesn't see a gap, as long as he's still seeing his color in front of him, not a defender uh, right in front of him, even if it's tight, if he's seeing his own uh, uh, player's colors or their butts, he's going to get up into this pinch point and keep those feet going, keep the feet going, keep the balance and the feet going as you hit the pinch point. Because when it comes through the pinch point, it's massive open space. So we don't really want him trying to cut it back into this because we've created a wall. And uh, we don't want him uh, trying to bounce it out if we've got inside leverage here. Now, if the defender should squeeze down really hard and we can't move him out and we have to squish him in, then he can scoot off the edge, but we don't want him bouncing backwards to get outside off the, off the edge that way. So by doing it this way, our idea is we're going to stay on the chains. We're never going to lose a yard on this play. We're always going to gain yardage and stay close on the on the chains. And the other concept about this wall is, you know, if we're just doing our gap protection and climbing, although we do, you know, do double teams and stuff in here, uh, but in general, if we do a good job of creating that wall, we don't really care how many people are in this box. And in fact, one of the drills we do, uh, particularly with our ones, is we put our ones up against our twos, threes, and fours, and we start 11 on 11, and then uh, we'll put the ball on the uh, one yard line, maybe the three yard line, and uh, we run and see if the defense can stop the play. If the offense scores, the defense gets another player, and we keep going until the defense finally can stop it. And at times we can get up to 18 players out on the field before the, the defense actually stops the power play. And this is a great uh, test for our, our guys in terms of, uh, you know, uh, picking up a run blitz, right, a gap blitz, uh, to be able to stay focused on their rules, stay focused on trying to climb, you know, uh, 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 um, up their blocks, up field, get, uh, get some movement and create that little moving wall that we can arc around. Um, that brings up the point, well, how big should those gaps be? Clearly, the bigger the gaps, uh, the more uh, 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 territory they have to cover on their blocks. So in general, we don't run with big, wide open gaps. In fact, getting down towards the goal line when we feel like we are going to get uh, a lot of gap pressure, uh, you know, we're going to tighten up those gaps a little bit. So you could say perhaps down on the goal line, we might even go to one foot gaps on the front. But uh, out in the middle of the field, we're going to be more around 18 inches to two feet. And even in some instances where it's advantageous for us to kind of open up uh, where the attack point, we may move that out to a three foot split. Um, so our guys, we don't want to give our gaps away too much. Uh, and so we want them to be fairly consistent. We also, you know, we don't want huge gaps uh, either for our pass protection schemes. Uh, so we tend to, to run a, a little bit tighter uh, with gaps than uh, maybe some uh, other uh, more modern type offenses. So that's, that's kind of fundamentally the, the strategies of the front uh, and the attack point. In this play, we do have our quarterback uh, reverse out. And he's going to come back off the handoff and go into a drop and then boot. 
Um, so we're going to give actually almost two play actions out of the quarterback on this play. You know, we want the quarterback to come off the handoff with a, uh, a really good play action fake uh, because we want to hold this safety from coming up and filling the, uh, the run lane and, and even soften the linebackers. And then uh, we'll just tag on a little boot at the end uh, just to make sure these backside guys have to do a double check because with the reverse pivot and the, and the good uh, ball work uh, with a good play action fake kind of here, the, these guys should be unable to tell whether this is a, a clearly a run play or not. And if we give a boot, we're going to make them hesitate and make this uh, wall take a little less punishment from the backside flow. Now, when we get out to the wide outs, how we block this is we want inside releases uh, by our receivers out here. And they're blocking, uh, they're going to try to block, you know, the, the second up to the third level of this thing. We'd love it if they can gain a, gain a man. So if this guy can get an inside release and work up to safety, that's what we want. If safety goes away, uh, he would then work back uh, to his corner. Similarly, over here, we're going to try to work inside release. We're watching this guy. If we think we can get him, uh, go get him. If he uh, ends up rolling away or fast flowing up this way, then we can settle and bend it back to our corner. And that is uh, fundamentally uh, how we run power. So uh, I'm going to erase this and talk while I'm erasing and drawing. So um, we start with the concept of a base play and we pick the one we feel is the best in football, which is power. And then after we have our base play, our first thing is we want a good play action off of it. Um, so that's what we're going to move into. Um, and quickly get this up on the board. So we'll use uh, essentially that same front to work against. Okay. So now we want our, our, uh, our play action off of power to, to resemble that play as much as possible. So we're going to do everything we can to mimic our, 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 our footwork and our releases and make the play look the same. So we know with the linemen we can't get downfield on pass plays, but we can still gap protect this. So instead of driving up that wall, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to use backside gap protection, pass protection in this case, and uh, this guy's going to go ahead and He's going to end up on this backside A gap there. This guy's going to end up on his backside A gap there. We're going to backside the B gap there. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to scoop this B gap and then hinge it back to protect the backside. And then our normally our wraparound guard is now going to come out and he's going to pick up uh, the C gap as he pulls. Um, the thing that we always want to attend to is any of these guys here who turn it back and they uh, and sometimes we do com you know com combination blocks here on this but it's still gap pass pro but any if any of these guys uh, end up with essentially no work to be done they're going to climb out and give the uh, quarterback a little extra protection on the back side so that's how, how we end up protecting it. You can see how much that looks like, like power. Um, now, this fullback, he's going to come, uh, and uh, normally he would attack at, at the B gap, and we don't want to interfere too much with the, with the guard, but he should be able to beat him. So he's going to take just a little wider release, and he's going to hit any friction as he comes out through the C gap here. So any, any player that shows coming hot off the edge, he's going to give them a little bit of friction, and then he's going to run out. 
okay? So there's our, our same play action as power. Our tailback is going to drop it down. He's going to give an excellent run fake. And again, the quarterback is responsible for the play action fake on a run. And this uh, tailback is really responsible for our play action uh, fake on a pass. The quarterback is going to present the ball in his hands for him. Uh, but the quarterback's eyes are downfield. He's not going to be staring down the mesh pocket. Uh, and uh, the quarterback uh, wants to be able to read the coverage, see any danger coming. We need this guy to give us a great fake, okay? So he's going to come up in here, and then he'll end up riding out here. Again, any leaks coming through this area, he's got to pick up. And if he doesn't get anything, then he can he can eventually settle out right over the middle here for a little drop down, okay? So quarterback now comes out, and we get a good fake here, and he goes into his drop to settle. Uh, this is a, you know, about a five count rhythm uh, to getting the ball out, hopefully. So tight end's gonna replicate his run release with a, with a, a down release or an inside release, and then he's gonna climb across the field at about five yards. So we've got him at five going out the back side, him at five going out the front side. This uh, front side wide out is going to take that inside release uh, like he's coming to block, climb vertical, and then skinny post it. But off the back side, we're going to do the same thing inside release, really watching that safety just like he was going after him to block him. Uh, and then he's going to end up climbing and he's going to run a dig route at 15 right there. So he's going to come in. Um, so this gives us uh, um, a, a really great replication of, of power. And how we typically would read this is if this safety is coming up here, uh, our quarterback knows he's going to go for the home run to the post. Uh, if this safety is backing out uh, and taking away our skinny post route, uh, now he's going to watch for uh, the dig route coming across uh, underneath, uh, underneath that. Um, he knows also if anything is going to hell in a hand basket, he probably is going to have an early release there uh, and uh, gets, gets the ball out uh, fairly early to the, uh, to the fullback in the flat. Sometimes we'll even tell the fullback not to get friction on the way out to get out fast. And on a fast, our quarterback knows, you know, we're going to go right to that fullback. We might think that this guy's got him in man coverage and that we can get it out there uh, quickly and get a big play out of it. Um, the, on the back side here, obviously, if these two don't open up, you know, we're going to come, we're going to come off of, uh, off of that look. If we get flushed this way, we've got a guy here. We've got to check down here. Any of these sideline routes, if they run out of room, they will convert eventually up into a, a vertical, almost like a scramble drill. Uh, kind of a concept um, and if we do get into scramble drill the underneath routes will go vertical and these deeper routes will work back uh, to the quarterback so that's that's uh, our, our base way that we run this obviously we're not going to set right behind the center it's not a straight drop back I probably didn't illustrate this well enough but off of this we actually want to set one body over towards the guard to help us out on our, our uh, backside uh, protection there um, where it can get a little bit thin. The other thing sometimes we do is if, if we are struggling to get this protected, um, if the rush is a little uh, fast, uh, we will go ahead and, and, uh, and do a full backside turn back protection where we won't pull the guard and this guy will take this gap and this guy will uh, uh, take the backside C gap rusher, and in this case, our fullback still running his friction through here, and then our tailback is going to come and pick up the full block. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a combination block on the C gap front side. 
So uh, that, that's kind of our change up uh, uh, protection. If we're struggling, it doesn't give us uh, quite as good a play action as, as we might like, um, but um, it gives us a better uh, protection. Okay, so uh, that's, that's the play action pass or power, power pass. Um, and now we want to have a really good counter to this. So typically, uh, one would, um, in most systems, one would pick a play uh, called counter tray uh, to be the counter to this. Uh, we're going to do something slightly different. Um, in terms of a, uh, of a counter. We'll stay with this same front. It may not be the best one to run this play against, but we'll take a look at it anyway. So, uh, counter means we're going to uh, give the initial play action in the direction of this right direction power, but we're going to come back and hit it off of the hit it off of the back side uh, here. And I, and I should say, you know, what we really like to do is count the fronts. So I put up an odd defense here. We could have an even, it doesn't matter. But if you actually count these fronts, and, and most of the time these people running this against us would either drop this safety down, rotate this one over, or they would slant their front to the strength. We're six over here, and five over here. Whereas the defense is five and a half and five and a half, okay? So we're gonna run this way every time, even if they're slanting, um, and, and until we are clearly seeing a, a fast rotation coming down, we're gonna take five and a half, five and a half at the snap and run this direction. So I'm gonna show this counter play. We're actually coming back uh, and, and we're going five and a half against five. So that's not to our advantage, but we'll, we'll go ahead and put it up anyway, uh, just to see what the counter looks like. If we start getting this roll or we're getting this slant, then this becomes a little bit more attractive. So we're gonna run this counter again as a backside gap scheme. And I'm not gonna go into the complexities of, of the blocking schemes. I'm just, we're just gonna uh, pay attention to gaps. And then down the road, we can talk more about uh, sort of the blocking schemes to initiate this. Um, so here we are with our, 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 our fullback, our big back, our blocking back, uh, and he is going to take his B gap, his typical B gap release, okay? And what he's gonna do here is the same thing. He's gonna maybe dig it up a little harder and he's gonna seal off the backside. He doesn't have to have a big kick out, but we want it sealed up, off, okay? So now, uh, this guy's got this C gap. He's gonna take, and, and when we run this, we're gonna go ahead and attack it straight up. This guy has got this B gap. He's got this A gap. And he's got this A gap, and he's got this B gap. And tight end in, in, in this particular case, uh, we're really gonna have a, a release inside to secure this gap, and he's gonna climb all the way probably to the third level on this, because um, we don't really need him with this blocking back, coming back this way, we don't need anybody attending there. So he can release downfield, okay? So the one maybe perhaps slight change up in this is just as we do, did uh, on the backside of the other play, uh, we're not gonna be as aggressive on these backside gaps in terms of driving people out. So we're actually going to control this gap with a little scoop up and control this gap with a little scoop up, okay? So that's just a little bit of a change up. We tend to do that a lot on the backside. So with this, our tailback, who's probably a little deeper at eight, is gonna take his first full power step at the A gap, just like he's, and that's too big for a power step, little power step towards the A gap. It looks just right now, this front side looks very much like we're running power, and this guard would be looping around. And then from there, he's going to skinny it up, and he's coming downhill 
uh, right at this guard. Okay? So he's going to come downhill right at that guard. And you remember the quarterback reverses out on power, so he reverses out. Little sleight of hand there, slips in the ball on, and as he goes uh, driving to the back side. So this play develops a little bit uh, slower, and what we're really looking at is, is the push we're getting here, and uh, our back now will have kind of a, a, a multiple way go. Uh, he can, um, we're anticipating perhaps we're gonna get uh, a little bit of a crease up in there, um, but if uh, <clears throat> that window closes, then he's got this window, and he's got an outside bounce uh, if he needs to, and if everything closes down, sometimes we'll actually see this bend all the way back out the back side. So you can see that's just a basic inside zone play. We're running it off of uh, uh, a, a counter action, a short counter step, uh, the reverse out by the quarterback. With our wide uh, guys, we do the same release inside. They're ideally trying to capture this player, if that player disappears too fast, they will then throttle it down and turn it back out on the corner and make sure they can't get into the play. Uh, we feel like these guys, you know, aren't used to being in the mix and we want to force them to have to come up and make tackles in the mix. And these guys tend to be bigger, badder run support guys. And if we can get an extra body on them, we want to uh, do that. So this is, this is our counter gap uh, scheme uh, uh, off of power. Um, now, uh, let's real quick just add a counter pass. Okay, so we want, we want to make this look uh, as much like counter as we can. So we're going to have uh, this uh, receiver work inside and essentially run the banana, okay? Uh, that's sort of an uh, old version of maybe a post corner. We're not taking the vertical release with inside stem and taking it back out, though. We're actually running it as, you know, a banana circle kind of route. Uh, this uh, uh, player t takes the same, his typical inside uh, release, and instead of taking it to a dig, an inside flat route, we're going to run an inside far post route. Not the skinny post, but the far post route. Uh, he's going to climb that way. Um, and this player here, is going to take his inside release, and in this case, he's going to take it back out to the mid-level route here. Um, so this is about 12 yards deep. Um, and our fullback, who's running his B gap here, is going to go ahead and, I'm sorry, um, he's going to uh, take it a little bit wider and do the same friction release and run his five yard out, oh, 12 there, five there, and run five on the out, okay? Our counter back drives forward, and he's gonna press out here and pick up the edge. So in this case, um, we're gonna actually uh, turn loose uh, a player on the back side, and the quarterback's gonna have to be quick on his feet, because we're gonna go ahead and gap protect this. Okay, so quarterback does his reverse out, sleight of hand, and now he has got eyes 
come in here. So we need a really good fake out of off the tailback out of this out of this one. And now the quarterback is going to go ahead and run a boot out the back here. And so he's got a flood route this way. Um, and on the on the back side here, uh, we're going to pick up any friction here with our tailback. And then eventually he's going to go ahead and run the skinny wheel, which is uh, some people would argue against that. I think to run kind of a wide wheel uh, up the gutter uh, is uh, a long ball to throw, particularly if you're under any duress. Um, but if he gets flushed here, pushed back this way, uh, getting into this, this little seam here, uh, that's a, a reasonable throw to make. Um, one of the alternatives to this that I will put up is uh, also that uh, you can do this in rhythm. Uh, so a 1,002, 1,003, uh, 1,004, uh, and you can actually have this back go from here, bubble a little bit, flat out, flat alley, turn back, and, uh, and you can also come back to a little counter screen off of this action uh, to the tailback. But by and large, we're just looking to get the ball, uh, advance the ball out in here. Uh, what we tell the guys though is if you, know, if you can't get outside the pocket on the boot to work the flood route, you know, if you've got some kind of pressure or something goes wrong, you know, you can uh, go ahead and look to try to hit the, uh, the, the post or come back here. Uh, try to get the ball out of your hand so we don't take a loss. Um, and we can block this fully if we want to uh, by, by pulling a guard to the back side. Uh, but uh, kind of like uh, just the, the, the general look of this looking so much uh, like our, our counter off of power. So now we've built uh, power. We've built a play action pass off of powder, power. We built the counter off of power. And now we have uh, a counter pass off of power. And in fact, we just put in uh, our first little uh, screen pass as well, which I do love counter screen passes uh, uh, in general. So, um, so that's kind of a package in and of, of itself. Um, we talked a little bit about how to count the front. So let's go back to that just for a second. Let's put up a different front just for fun. So again, uh, on this front, we're, uh, we're, five, we're six and five. The defense is five and a half, five and a half. We prefer to go that way. Uh, if, uh, if they happen to um, take an, and roll this, uh, roll this, uh, this way and drop a safety down, perhaps walk him out of the box and ship these guys back. So now if we count, count it this way, we go one, two, three, four, five and a half, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five and a half. That doesn't really change our counting very much uh, in terms uh, of how we're going to uh, attack this. Uh, but if they end up staying in uh, something like this and rolling the safeties over, now all of a sudden we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're taking each of these in half. One, two, three, four, five. You know, now, now uh, uh, everything is balanced up, and my attitude has frequently been, if I'm, if I'm uh, six versus five, or five and a half, uh, or let's say, yeah, six versus five, um, that... Um, why not run to the skinny side? You got one less guy to deal with that might get in your way. So uh, that we've done that a lot over the years uh, is if they match us uh, 
numbers for numbers, we're just going to go away from the numbers because there's one less guy that we have to worry about screwing up our play. Well, on power, this gets a, it gets a little funky. Uh, it may, may not be quite ideal how, how we deal with it. Um, it. It works a little better against this 40 front when we get uh, something like that. Um, so uh, the way we would run this is by base rules is backside gap, backside gap, uh, backside gap, right? Uh, he's headed to the B gap, got the first guy outside. Uh, he's got the wrap around. Right, and the wall should be forming kind of through here, uh, and we just run it. We end up running it to the skinny side. Now we can do a couple of you know interesting things when we get it going back to the skinny side. Uh, he can take his B gap and hinge or climb, and we can now tell the tight end and we don't you know we don't need you. Our tackle's taking care of the backside B gap and and hopefully any. Uh, anything quick off the edge. So the tight end can climb and get up to the next level and give us a block downfield. Or we can actually say, hey, tight end, you're going to scoop this down. You're going to come flying down and uh, uh, make sure we don't get a chop block between these two guys. But we're going to give you, tight end is going to take B gap control, as we call it, B gap control instead of the tackle. Well, we can't, we could send our tackle down to the second level, but we don't want to do that typically. So the other thing we can do is just tell the tackle to go. And we get two, two guys up through the hole and it becomes a massively powerful play coming back to the skinny side, okay? Now all these guys are just doing their same same releases. Uh, he's driving again. This gets a little skinnier here without the tight end too. That's why it's so important that he drives to the A gap first. Don't want him getting out in front of his blocking. So, and then right up through there, quarterback's got the same reverse out, drop, boot. Okay, and we do like him to carry that out till he's outside the tackle box on the back side. So uh, carrying out those fakes is real important. Um, so so that, that's how we can, you know, kind of uh, look at, wow, we can actually get a, a pretty decided advantage once they have to shift to our strength to stop our power um, and we can uh, come back to the skinny side. So let's uh, just with that in mind, without putting up new uh, blocking, Let's just go, uh, not take the time, but just look at how we would run a play action pass off of that. Really no different. Inside release, skinny pose. Inside release to the dig, coming across. Um, now we end up with um, the, the tight end kind of on uh, the other side. So he's going to go ahead and still take his inside release and secure things. Okay? Uh, and then from here, he can go ahead and pivot and take it back out uh, to his backside route. The other thing we can actually have him do, uh, sort of the Tony Gonzalez deal, is come in here, secure the B gap, sort of, you know, chop that B gap a little bit, uh, lie on his belly, and then pop it out. Uh, and a lot of times in, in coverage, the corner when he goes down stops covering, you get nobody out the backside, and now you've also got your fullback out here, either on his... Uh, uh, friction release or on a fast release if you call it that way okay um, so uh, we can also run the counter back nothing changes on counter going back the other way nothing would change for a counter pass going back to the to that uh, strong side of the formation so let's talk about some of the other things that we do being that we just put up that interesting block of the tight end So there's uh, some things we can do here where we like doing this, where we end up, you know, this may be more of a goal line situation uh, where we want to have two tight ends in, or if you just got two good tight ends, you want them in the game, you go with two tight ends. And again, as we demonstrated coming back on that last play, 
The thing that we can do with this is we can also block down here, block down, gap it down, gap it down, gap it down. We got the kick here, and now we've got the guard coming up through here and the tackle coming up too. And look at how strong that wall starts to get, right? And this guy just has to, he actually has to work it all the way down to secure that B gap protection on the back side so we don't get caught from behind. So that's a, uh, that's an easy thing to do out of this formation. Um, the other thing that's really nice to do down on the goal line is to maybe bring in your flanker and put him more into a wing set. And now that he can have a down block here, or in some cases, it may just be getting a good seal from, an, uh, from a, a guy off the edge, uh, but we can take the power play a little bit wider when he when he comes in and down blocks there, okay? Or we can um, put him into the backfield in any particular position, uh, and he can form uh, essentially a double team uh, with the fullback on our kick out, uh, so that if they're bringing a lot of edge pressure, we're gonna focus on one guy, but we may be able to run from a kick out here to corner, sort of a combination block and be able to pick off both those guys uh, from a nice inside out position. And then the other thing we like to do down here is have the quarterback reverse out and toss it to the tailback and the quarterback then leads it up through there. And that's a mess, right? <laughs> that, but what that technically is, it's a little wedge. You've got a wall in here and you've got this little wedge leading your back right through the hole. And if they're patient and they get into that crease and they follow their color instead of looking for open space, there's literally, typically, if the wall's done its job, there's no flow coming from the inside and our two kind of outside leverage players there are, are caught up in the kick out and we've got massive uh, flow coming up and you can kind of walk into the into the end zone. So those are kind of fun things to do. Maybe the last thing you might even do just for window dressing is think about motioning this back in uh, and uh, from there carrying out his assignment either on an inside release or coming back out for the kick out or just put him on an orbit, right? Um, just put him on an orbit release there just to kind of hold the back side uh, and you can uh, hand it off, you can fake this hand off, you can design some play actions uh, around that as well. And if we were going to design a play action around that, our two wide receivers, now he's got the skinny, which is really a seam for a tight end, uh, and, uh, and he's got the, the dig underneath it, and now these backs uh, in you know their uh, combination are going to be responsible for um, filling out these, these other base routes uh, that we uh, like in, in Power Pass. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of the a basic power package. Uh, you can uh, imagine that you could you know, dress it up a, a little bit more. Uh, we tend to put in, uh, let's do one other thing just while we're up here. Um, talk a little bit about I won't even put the you know I got to put the defense up for this so we'll do it um, so let's say we're either seeing this role to strength or maybe just a pre-alignment. Maybe they're going to put a safety way deep and pre-align out here with him sitting kind of in, uh, looking right inside out through the power lane. Not a bad idea uh, to try to stop power if they're struggling with it. Um, or perhaps you'll see people in man coverage and you could, uh, he's manned up here, he's manned up here, they're going man free. Uh, and they give us this kind of a look uh, with 
this guy on this uh, back out the, out the front side. Either way, you see this, this shell here. Maybe you get a sense that they're bringing a blitz. They're going to they're gonna try and man us up or man free and bring a blitz. And the quarterback, uh, let's widen him out a little bit, uh, sees that they're definitely to our strength um, with a corner sitting somewhere in here. So you can see that there is there's a little bit of a hole right there, right? And, and with our traditional little inside release by our back and a little communication between the quarterback uh, and this backside receiver, uh, he's working into this hole with a little bit of a vertical direction so he's not coming into the linebackers uh, up into the, into the seam there, uh, trying to get an advantage on, on this guy. Uh, and let's say everybody thinks it's a run, including our own guys, right? Um, we're going to gap, gap, gap. He's gapping. Uh, he's going to come inside. Um, and we end up with a wrap around there and this here, right? So with both of these, I mean, both of the wideouts can be aware uh, of uh, the signal between the, the quarterback uh, and them. Nobody else has to know what's going on. Uh, we can run this. Our quarterback can quickly release out. And if he uh, happens to see uh, that open, but typically looking to this hole in the backside, he's going to reverse out and quickly throw there. Hit that guy. Okay. You know, if that happens to break down, we'd like this guy to be plugged in enough to be working the front side so the quarterback at least may have an option there. Uh, to get rid of the ball, but because we're pulling guys, ball's got to be out fast. We can't waste uh, any time in making those decisions. Technically, they're made prior to the snap, and we're going to live with uh, what happens, okay? And then, uh, just to uh, work off of uh, the fact that I like screens, uh, and so we'll, uh, we'll work in screen passes where we'll block up to there. Uh, we'll have <clears throat> this guy blocking up to there, very similar run. Uh, we'll put our tight end all the way to the back side to block that, uh, uh, that third off the back side. And off of uh, this uh, same action here, uh, we're going to... Sometimes we do it to the tailback, if, but a lot of times we really like our fullback. And so we'll have the fullback uh, take his initial release here and then back out of it. Uh, make sure there's no friction coming through and peel out here. And then we get a flat, we get an alley, and we get a turn back here. Uh, and then we have a guard uh, to the front side and a tackle to the front side. Uh, and uh, he'll peel here. So the, the, uh, the tackle's out to the flat, the pulling guard's going to get up into the alley, um, and uh, we're going to come off of this with a crappy fake in this case. Uh, deep drop by our quarterback. Our first look is back here to the counter screen, in this case to the fullback, but you can reverse the backs on it and do it to the tailback. And if he's got too much pressure there, or if it's been snuffed out, then here's where he's going to either ground the ball or give it for a kind of a, a, a skinny screen off of the front side. Uh, so we get a nice, uh, a nice screen off of uh, this action as well. So you can see we've got a little quick pass. Uh, we got, um, uh, with that orbit motion, we can get a little reverse action. Um, we've got uh, some screens built in, uh, a power screen. Uh, and uh, as well as the, the counter screen that we uh, showed earlier. So that's a, that's a pretty dang complete uh, offense just in and of itself. And you can create other stuff in, in, the, in the passing game. There's not much need to, but you can trade front side and back side routes. Uh, you know, have the, have the post come from the back side and get a dig on the front side. Things like that where you can just kind of, you know, as you get uh, into the season, people are used to seeing it, they kind of know what's coming. Uh, you give them just uh, a little bit different uh, uh, look sometimes just to uh, change things up and build on it. Um, so that's power. Thanks.